We're going to open this morning's uh, meeting. Good morning, everyone. And we'll open with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Three action items on the agenda for today. The first is the approval to rescind the July 2nd, 2019 resolution terminating the services of employee number 435. Um, can I have a motion? Glenn, a second, Scott. Any questions or comments? That's just the one that we spoke about last time. Yeah, so this is the last, This is, we just did this at the last meeting. Correct. So, so for Section 71, the year was up as of effective July 20th. So just the timeline in terms of uh, the meeting with the individual, when the letter was sent, when the individual was finally able to uh, receive work from the doctor indicating that uh, they would not be fit to return to work, uh, and then subsequently learning that she, uh, the individual was, uh, in fact, eligible for retirement, all of which was communicated in a formal letter uh, May 22nd from Ms. Holligan. And subsequently, I met with uh, the individual and his fellow on June 4th, where that was also communicated along with the SEIU president. So was she still, she was still able to um, retire, even though we had taken the action last week, or last meeting? So just the nature of the timeline in terms of the board meetings was such that we communicated to her for Section 71 that there would be a board action for termination, which is Section 71 uh, Civil Service Workers Comp. Uh, but during that time, she was still awaiting uh, indication from her doctor she could return to work. Uh, and she was, she is eligible for retirement. Okay. And so us, by, by rescinding this, we basically never did it, so that she is eligible for the time frame to put her retirement papers in. Yes. Okay. She was hoping to return to work. Okay, so that's what she was hoping. She was hoping waiting for that doctor's note. Yes. All right, any other questions? Okay, so all those in favor? Six, um, okay, it uh, passes six, zero. I didn't do all those against, none. Passes six, zero. <laughs> all right, action item number two, disposal of district property, vehicles number 255, number 260, and number 261. Um, can I have a motion? Scott, thank you, and Eric, second. Any questions or comments? Each of these vehicles are over 15 years old. Um, two of them have over 200,000 miles on their engines. Uh, the third has 155. And this is typical for this time of year where we uh, start to um, sell off our old vehicles in preparation for buying new vehicles, which were approved through proposition number two. Are they buses? Yes. Buses. Yeah, buses. So we do, we try to sell them, is that what we Yeah, do? we, okay. we bid them, uh, typically we bid them. What we've been finding a lot is because our vehicles are so old, they really don't have a second life. So we'll usually bid them, we won't get any successful results, and then we'll find out that we can actually sell it better if we sell it to a scrapyard. So for three, uh, these three vehicles, because we've sold similar, we've bid vehicles similar in nature and not have received successful uh, responses, uh, we're recommending that these be sold for scrap. And uh, that's indicated in the uh, attachment to the resolution. Okay. okay. Um, all those in favor? All those against? Okay. Passes 6 0. And number three on the action item list is approval of contract pursuant to competitive bid, tennis court repair. I have a motion. Glenn and a second, Eric. Any questions or comments? Every few years, we resurface the, uh, the tennis court. It develops cracks um, and the like. Uh, the last time we performed a uh, significant repair was about three years ago. Uh, this repair should get us another three to five years on the tennis court before we have to replace it. And the time frame? Are you ready for the fall? For the work, yes. The work is to take place over the summer in time for the fall. And uh, one of our community members, uh, I believe his name is Tim Wallach, uh, reached out and has recommended or has uh, suggested that he uh, intends to make a donation to help pay for this uh, project. Oh, that's nice. Um, a question just related with the cracking. If, um, what's the, uh, I noticed there's a crack on the track. 
Does that is that under the same sort of every few years it gets? Yeah, every few years you, you have to fill in cracks okay. uh, before you do a complete replacement. Um, so you know this kind of floats us before we have to replace the entire track before we have to replace the entire tennis court. Okay. All right. Um, oh, so they're not ripping up the tennis court? No, they're just repairing. They're, they're filling in cracks and resurfacing. Okay. Right now. Does it make sense if if we know what's going to happen every couple of years? Is there a way to sort of or have we in the past sort of kind of budgeted out more of a maintenance sort of program instead of a repair kind of thing? Well, th I mean, this is technically the maintenance uh, aspect of it. To, re uh, to completely replace the tennis court would be, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars. Any other questions, comments? Does it make sense that uh, these tracks and the tennis courts every couple of years we do fill crackers at a smaller amount of money? Is there a way to have a budget account or to put aside reserves specifically highlighted for track repair instead of just well, doing we a lot of miscellaneous funds? Or? I mean, we, we do budget funds for these types of maintenance projects like, you know, replacing concrete, you know, when we have uh, chips and cracks and, and things of that nature, but nothing specific, you know, earmarked specific for, uh, you know, tennis court or track, but rather, you know, money available for these types of general maintenance. Yeah. Okay. Almost like a fleet replacement plan, but for mm -hmm. the fields, yeah. okay. that type of thing. Yeah, but, yeah and, and again, we do have, you know, in within our uh, facilities budget, we do have funds available for these types of, um, you know, really it's like routine maintenance. Okay. Any, any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll take a vote. All those in favor? Six. All those against? Zero. Yes, six, zero. Um, Next is the consent agenda, which is approval of personal personnel items. Mr. Harrington. Uh, okay, well, certainly the high school continues to be busy. I want to uh, certainly uh, acknowledge uh, Ms. Horler for her good work in securing uh, high quality candidates and positions that I understand are new positions uh, in the district. Uh, we have an amended date uh, that's a result of uh, a need for uh, a child who did not have access at the beginning of the program. Our ingenuity. Uh, and then Mr. Potter's resignation. And Mr. Um, right. so she she take yes, I did have her exit interview uh, yesterday morning. Uh, so she's off, and we wish her well on her next step in her journey in her career. Yes, we do. And it, and it looks like there's two science teachers at the high school. Correct. And an ENL teacher at the high school. So that's, that's great. Um, okay, uh, anything else? Uh, that's it, personnel wise. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor? Six, motion passes six zero. Did you take a motion on that? I, th I thought it, did I not? Okay, can I take a motion on the um, approval of the consent agenda? Glenn and second there. Okay, and that's everything. So with that, we will close today's meeting. Thank you. Motions Where is Sonia? <laughs> uh, who wants to make a motion to close the meeting? Again, Scott's dying to get <laughs> there. He's jumping out of his seat. So all those in favor of closing the meeting?